about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So a little background information, my sister and I were both 16 and in our sophomore year of high school. And yes, my sister and I were twins, but we were the complete opposite. She was a girly girl and I was a tomboy. But the summer before our sophomore year, we both got grounded because we were driving my dad's car without our license and we wrecked it. So we ended up spending all summer together, which was very unusual because it was like her and I were acquaintances living in the same house. Well, over that summer, we got super close and she ended up turning me into a girly girl. She taught me how to take care of my skin, do my hair, do my makeup, and how to dress. Now, mind you, once we got into high school, she never spoke to me because I wasn't a part of the little clique that she was in. So she was like, yay, you can finally hang out with my friends and I am super excited. So school starts, I end up becoming friends with all of her friends and my sister's really good friends with this one boy. But she had always said that she never liked him like that. So she introduced us, him and I started talking and we both ended up liking each other, like for part two. Part two about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So like I said, my sister and I start school, I become friends with her friends, and she introduces me to this guy that she's been best friends with for a while. Him and I end up talking, I really like him, he really likes me. And my sister would always hype me up, she would be like, oh my god, you should get with him, he's a, such a nice guy, you guys would look so great together. So the one night he asked me if I wanted to go on a date with him, and of course I said yes, so I ran to my sister's room, I was so excited to tell her. So I knock on her door, I go in, and I'm like, oh my gosh, guess what? She's like, what? I'm like, he asked me out on a date, and she just sits there and stares at me. And when I ask her what's wrong, she's like, oh my god, you knew that I liked him. You're such a bad sister. I would have never done this to you. So then I started to feel bad, but then I didn't because I remembered how she used to hype me up. So the next day, a few hours before my date, she comes in my room. She's like, hey, I'm really sorry about how I acted yesterday. I would love to help you get ready for your date if you'll let me. I feel so bad. And we're sisters, so of course I get over it. And I tell her, yes, I want her to help me, like for part three. Part three about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So like I said, she asked me if I want help getting ready. I say yes. And my family's super Italian, so we have thick, dark hair that grows in everywhere. Like I literally have a unibrow and the peach fuzz that's above my lips looks like a mustache. So my sister's like, hey, do you want me to wax your face? And I say yes. And she definitely wasn't over the situation and she wanted me to be in pain because I begged her to use this IPL device on me called you like which was basically at home laser hair removal but safer and it did not hurt at all so my sister hasn't had to deal with hair in literally months so i beg her to use you like on me and she's like no either you can let me wax you or you're going on this date with a mustache so of course i gave in to her waxing my face we go grab my mom's wax which has probably been sitting in her cupboard for literally six years my sister puts it in the microwave and then i lay down on the kitchen table and she goes to put the wax on me i already knew this was going to be painful as soon as the wax touched my skin i literally started screaming and she was like, stop being a baby. And she put more on me. I knock the container over. It gets all over me. When I get to the hospital, I figure out that I have third degree burns. And my sister did it on purpose. Every time I was taken away from my biological mother at the age of seven and my little brother was only three years old. We have been taken away due to her immigration status and some criminal charges against her. After that, we were adopted by an amazing couple who are now our adoptive parents. My dad and I had a lot of problems because he was too overprotective, so I moved out when I turned 18 and I moved back in with my biological mom. When I moved back in, she was married and had my two sisters with her husband who we'll call Andrew. My mom dated her husband for about eight years before she got married. And then one year after getting married, they had my sister. Right after my mom gave birth, she found out that Andrew had been cheating on her. She decided to forgive him and give him another chance and after living with her for a while i got to know her and although she is my mother and i love her she is very toxic and narcissistic she was jealous of my now husband since the beginning of our relationship and she has never been accepting of him which was causing problems for us it was so bad that when i was pregnant with my first child she tried to make me leave him but after i got pregnant she tried to turn me against my husband and she's taken full advantage of it ever since then i was very aware of the type of controlling person my mom was so then in 2018 my cousin diana was 12 years old she was from mexico and she came to the u.s to live with her father at the time my uncle was not in the place to be a dad due to the things that he was doing so my mom ended up taking my cousin in right after taking in a little girl from guatemala as well so she taught the girls to cook and to clean but after that she made them take care of my three siblings and clean my mom's house and just basically do everything they were basically maids at this point so then in 2020 we noticed some really weird stuff started to happen whenever andrew would go into him in my mom's room diana would go in the room and shut the door behind them now here's the thing at the time diana was 14 and my mom's husband was 41 and ever since then it would happen more and more often i remember on multiple occasions he would want to go to the store and he would tell me to tell my mom to let diana go with him but then this one time he asked me and i was like why and he looked super uncomfortable and he was just like you know what never mind fast forward a while later and i remember i was looking for my mom and i opened the door to her room and i saw diana and andrew hugging it wasn't a regular hug though she was like bear hugging him so at that point i was like what is this 
The creepiest thing that a guy has ever said to me while trying to be slick was it was this guy that I met at a campfire in March one year, okay? And we hit it off immediately. We, we fe It felt like we'd known each other forever. We could just talk and talk and talk. We had all these similar interests. It, there was maybe a little bit of a narcissistic element to our relationship because I was like, oh my gosh, he's just like me. So we started hanging out more and more until we were seeing each other every single day. And after we'd been seeing each other every day for several months, uh, we were sitting on the couch just to paint the scene. I'm on one side of the couch, he's on the other. I'm eating a dinner that he cooked for me, which feels relevant because this just feels like some real Joe Goldberg level. He was on the other side doing God knows what on his laptop. And there's a TV show playing and we're both talking over it. And I start to tell him a story about my life and he said, I've heard this one. And I was like, really I think I got a pretty sharp memory I don't think I've told you the story before and he said without looking up from his laptop yeah you told it to a small group of us at a party back in January and I was like oh cool cool like I, I think I remember telling that story in January and then I was like I didn't know you in January and and there were a lot of ways he could have responded to that right he could have said oh but I was at the party oh I know John like we had friends in common like and instead, without looking up from his laptop again, he just kept typing and he was like, well, I've been by your side for a lot longer than you think. And that, that's creepy, right? That's, and I tried to justify it in my brain. I was like, well, maybe he did like know of me and have a crush on me and we had mutual friends and I like tried to justify it. But still, I was like, I think I should go. And he said, are you sure you can crash here tonight? And I was like, no, no, I should go. And he said, okay, I'll take you home. Click. And he put the laptop away. And I was like, my roommates know I'm with you. And he said, yeah, okay. And he took me home. I ignored that weird thing that he said for a while and more little red flags and inconsistencies in in him as a person started popping up until finally i took a big box of his stuff it was waist high i filled it i went over to his apartment while he wasn't there and i left it there for him to find i was just really creeped out with him at this point and so we ended things and i said can i have my stuff back and he said no so i had to call up my attorney uncle and i said hey how do i get my stuff back and he told me that i should just tell Joe that I was going to go to the police. He said, you have text evidence of Joe refusing to give your stuff back, right? And I was like, ooh, no, we've been communicating on Snapchat. And my uncle lawyer was like, Kate, you're an adult. And I said, I know. And he said, why didn't you use his stuff to negotiate the return of your stuff? And I was like, why do people keep asking me that? I was being dramatic. And the stuff that Joe had was expensive and I am poor. So I didn't want to be petty, but I threatened to file a police report and Joe had it all delivered to my house. My husband was 35 years old and he didn't have a car nor a job. He never went to work for anybody else and he felt like it was going to rot his brain. So I tried to respect that and just let him use my car whenever he wanted. He never put gas in it. He never got an oil change. And I started to get fed up. Then I tell him, okay, that's it. I'm done. I need you to get a job. I'm losing respect for you. He gets an attitude, grabs my keys, storms out the door.